Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about Terraform and detecting drift, and how to uh, reconcile changes that's been made it made outside of Terraform. So, when you're working with Terraform, you want to have your source of truth always be your code. You don't want to make any changes outside of that, um, which you can, but it's just now you're you're going to be out of sync. Uh, your resources that are configured in um, your code isn't going to match with what's in your actual infrastructure. So now you have dependency issues and things like that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create this environment and I can actually share this on. So we have, let me pull it up here. One second, Chrome, let's open up another. Let's open up a tab and get rid of some of these other ones here. Too many windows open. Okay. So I'm going to go to pull this up here. So my website, letmetechyou.com, has the uh, environment that we're going to build here. And it's going to be this home lab here. You can essentially use this. So I'm going to build this here and to do that, just Terraform apply auto approve. So I'm just going to deploy this environment here. And what we're going to do in here is I'm going to make changes to the security group inside of um, Azure. So right here. So you see how it says source address prefix is 172.24.1. And it's deny. We're going to change this to allow all for RDP. And then what we're going to do is then come back to our um, uh, code here and kind of show what things um, are changed and how to recognize those changes. So whenever you're making a change, uh, all of your, um, like, so there's a state file that gets created. And basically that state file is what identifies or kind of is the middleman between your resources in the cloud and your code that sits on your computer or server, wherever it sits at. And if those are out of sync, then that's where the state file can identify that, hey, something has changed in the infrastructure side or something has changed on the your local side that then needs to update the infrastructure side here. So I'm gonna let this go ahead and build out here Okay, now that this is built, we essentially have our environment um, staged in Azure. And if we go over to there, and there are home lab security group. We have the allow RDP outbound or inbound 3389 from this source, any destination, deny. So we actually want to allow this. So we can essentially come in here and say this is like, immediate change we need to get done to bring something online. So we come in, you know, say so we make our changes. Um, invalid, let's see. So let's see, we got let's see if that lets us Maybe we could do the asterisk. So 0, 0, 0, 0, So basically any, which let's see how this portrays this in here. So let's see. Let's, let me change something here because this should be. Actually, let's do 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0. So when you create a new one, it lets you do the asterisk, but it doesn't look like that's allowing you in the um, portal here. So let me see once this gets saved. So to test this, let's, let me actually um, go to my resource group, home lab. 
Well, that's okay. That's fine. Um, we we just want to identify a, something being changed, so it doesn't necessarily have to work. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to run a Terraform plan, but I'm just going to do a refresh only. And what this is going to do is it's going to you know take my current state file, compare it with my resources in the cloud. And, and let me know what's been changed and what's going to change if I if I was to run a Terraform apply. So if you were to run an apply with what we currently have, you would essentially be wiping out your current changes in the cloud and you would um, be reverting back to what you previously had. So once this comes up here, now I am using the backend provider. So this uh, is my um, TF state file is located in Azure, whereas yours may be located over here. So as you can see here, we have what's being added in the green here. So let me use this my scroll up a little bit. So we got all this here. And these are what's going to be um, change and then this would be removed if I was to update my state. Now I could essentially update the state file and um, have my state synced but you know sometimes it just depends on the resources that you're utilizing too. So like say you made it you you made a change to an EC2 instance that could destroy it and recreate it. Um, there's certain diff things that you have to look at to make sure that the changes that you make aren't going to affect other resources that you are particularly going to be using. So what I'm essentially going to go ahead and do is I'm going to, so this can actually be updated here. So I can do allow and then I'm going to do 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 slash zero. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to do a Terraform plan. Oops, oops sorry. Uh, I ran the same one. So give me a second here. So yeah, we're essentially not needing to import any resources because this resource is already provisioned. We just need to update and get our state back in sync with the drift that was created. So what we did is we basically matched our configuration with what's in the cloud. So sometimes, you know, depending on like the type of resource, if this is a new resource that was created, like something net new, like another resource group or, or I mean security group or instance, then you would need to do like an import of that resource into your, um, your configuration and then also the state. So as you can see, it's still... I'm showing this, but that's because we haven't ran the apply. So I'm going to do Terraform apply. And then refresh only. Then let's see what this does here. So once this, and now we shouldn't see any changes being, um, done up here we already we want to keep we, we've already made our changes up here we don't need to go in and you know edit anything or grab anything uh, different we essentially should get our new configuration to show up here and then we can also i can also show you how you can identify how the state file is representing some of your resources um, like in a json format or just kind of like in a block format so once we pull it up here, and then we're going to hit yes. All right. So now as you can see we had that change that was made. So now if I do a Terraform show, we're going to go in and look at our state file that's going to come now this is going to show everything there is a way to identify like a single resource doing like a terraform terraform state 
and then the uh, resource name. But if we scroll up here, we will see our security group. And now as you see, our source of truth, which is our code here, matches with what's inside of our um, Azure portal. So that's it there. That's just a way to uh, fix the error that you would get if you were to make some changes and it says, you know, objects have changed outside of Terraform. That's when to go ahead and pull it in. And again, always need to remember the resources and check the uh, uh, registry just to make sure that nothing's going to be destroyed or there's no other dependencies that's going to be dependent on that specific resources ID if you're creating or removing something. So again, once you're done, we're just going to do a Terraform destroy just to get rid of everything. And that's it. If you have any questions, you know, leave me a comment down below in the uh, on the blog and also the um, YouTube uh, video here. I'll try to get back with you with any questions I can. Again, check out the site, letmetechyou.com. And again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.